is Lev Milik, and welcome to Pump Video Academy Online. In today's module, we'll talk about pump efficiency, and specifically, how does energy through efficiency is affected by not having the gauges or broken gauges in the system. In the setup we have here, we have a clean water supplied by the suction tank to a pump. In fact, two pumps in this case are running in parallel, but we'll discuss one of the pumps for, for, for this specific experiment. The suction gauge is broken, as the sign shows, or missing perhaps, as many times is the case in the real installations, unfortunately. This charge uh, page is showing slightly less than zero PSI, slight vacuum, registering the fact that the center line of the gauge is slightly built above the suction level in the tank, therefore registering a slight static vacuum. Well, in order to calculate the pressure, differential pressure of the pump, where the pump is operating, we have to have those gauges. Only one is available. So we can assume as many times, unfortunately done, and sometimes there is no other way of doing it, that the suction pressure in front of the pump is equal or approximately equal to a suction level of the tank converted in a PSI. Suction level divided by 2.31. To illustrate, here's our tank, and here's the pump. Suction level is above the pump center line. Gauge is missing on the suction side. Discharge line recirculates back to the tank. And we have a discharge gauge slightly, let's put it here, above the level at the tank, so registering slight vacuum when the pump is not operating. Delta P across the pump is discharge pressure, P sub D, minus suction pressure, which we can estimate by taking the height in the tank divided by 2.31. Well, that estimate is the only thing we can do in this experiment. How much error do we introduce by not having the gauge and actually measuring the suction pressure and not making approximate estimate? And how, is it, how does it depend on the side of the pump, the speed of the pump, the energy of the pump, the pressure of the pump? All these parameters we'll have to discuss. So with that, we'll turn to the experiment. From the pump fundamentals, we know that a pump head is a difference between a discharge head and a suction head. So we need to know those two components, discharge and suction heads. How do we know that? How do we measure? And where do we measure? Could make a substantial difference between the real and perceived pump efficiency. Take example that we are looking at. We have a discharge gauge and we can calculate accurately discharge head by taking that discharge PSI time specific gravity over 2.31 coefficient in US units and that gets us discharge head. Suction head we just measure since we don't have a gauge and then we take the difference. That approach will be pretty consistent and the same regardless of the type of the pump that we're looking at. It could be a single stage and suction centrifugal pump, 10 horsepower at the chemical plant pumping sulfuric acid, or it can be a multi stage, multi horsepower boiler feed pump at a power plant, or a vertical turbine pump at a water plant at municipal plant. All have similar impact on the efficiency. So does it really matter if we have the suction gauge and we don't? How much impact do we really have on the pump efficiency? Is that a lot or is that negligible? To answer this question, we have to first understand what we're trying to accomplish in the first place. Well, quite simply, we want to have as much flow as possible for a given design more pressure, less power consumed, more efficient pump consuming less energy. Pretty straightforward. 
We also know that this deficiency point, operating flow, is defined as a optimal condition at which the pump should operate most efficiently. That's called BEP, best efficiency point. To the left or to the right of the BEP, efficiency is reduced. But regardless where the pump operates, a second error, which is introduced by lacking gauges or non-calibrated gauges or missing gauges, is equally important and equally impacting on the pump efficiency in addition to the fact that the pump might not be operating at or near best efficiency point. What is efficiency? That is a ratio of good power, which is a fluid power, divided by the total power supplied to a pump. In the U.S. units, we know that that is a product of flow times head times specific gravity, divide by a conversion coefficient, 3,960 in U.S. units. Pressure to head, differential pressure in PSI, times 2.31, divide by specific gravity. For cold water, for example, that will be 1.0, and that gets us a feet of head. Note that one inch of mercury is half a PSI, and we need that in the movie we are about to watch, the suction pressure actually will become negative, it will create partial vacuum, and because vacuum is typically measured in inches of mercury, not in PSIs, we need to be able to convert from that into PSI. So let's watch the video and see what actually happens. All right, so when we're going to run an experiment to test right now, we have the discharge pressure at zero, and the suction pressure is not known. Therefore, we assumed that it's the same as in the tank, which is zero PSI gauge pressure. On the pump, the pressure goes to approximately 2.5 PSI. We don't know suction pressure, assuming it being zero. So it's 2.5 minus 0, 2.5 PSI differential. What is it in reality? Well, it's actually a slight vacuum. Showing the vacuum because the suction gauge is on the same level as the tank, but it's a long piping leading from a gauge to the tank. Flow is moving, the friction losses, take away from the pressure, what's left is negative 3 inches of vacuum or 1.5 minus 1.5 psi pressure. Differential is 2.5 minus minus 1.5 for psi, not 2.5 which we assume. Let's turn the pump off. 0 and 0, turn it back on, 2.5 minus 1.5 quite substantial impact on the energy, on the pressure, energy, and efficiency, as we'll, as we'll see through the following sets of slides explaining the theory behind it and why it happens. So you see that the long suction lines with bends, turns, and kinks means a lot of pressure lost. In our example, instead of 2.5 PSI differential, we essentially having a 4 PSI differential. If we actually take the suction gauge, install it, and read negative 1.5 PSI versus assume 0 PSI, which would have been based on the suction head provided by the tank only, neglecting the losses. That is 62% error. 2.5 over 4 is 62%. That means lost money, lost money through friction. For a small pump like this, the error is great, although the power overall is relatively small. But for a larger pump, the error will be a little bit less, but the power is greater. The net result might surprise you. Well, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and learned something about effect of the gauges or absence of gauges on pump efficiency and energy consumed.
Granted, in the experiment we did here, for a small pump, even a great error of 62% on the pressure and on efficiency may not have that dramatic impact on the dollars of energy wasted. The pump is small. In a real plant, a larger pump, boiler feed pump, multi-stage boiler feed pump, at a power plant, could be consuming thousands of horsepower with thousands of PSI differential pressure. At a water waste treatment plant in a municipality, you may also have a multiple stages consuming thousands of horsepower, hundreds of thousands of horsepower, significantly greater pressure differentials. And it is true for those type of pumps, large units, the net error on pressure will be somewhat less, could be actually significantly less. On the thousand PSI pressure on the discharge side, a couple of PSI difference in the suction will not make that much impact on error. But even 1%, couple of percentage error, given 2,000 horsepower operation, may result in a very substantial energy wasted. And you can calculate that and let us know what you come up with. So, it is important. Gauge positioning, presence of gauges, right calibrations, makes a difference on a pump passing the specification or not passing. The pump consuming energy that you think it is consuming versus what it really consuming. So let us know. In the next Pump Video Academies, we'll continue talking about energy topics, reliability topics, mechanical seals, bearings, and other subjects. Specifically for energy, in the next Pump School in Atlanta, a two-day seminar, a two-day Pump School session, September 10th and 11th, we'll discuss this topic and other ones in much greater detail. Prior to that, I'd like to hear from you. Send me the email, phone call, with questions, comments, input, controversy, suggestions, disagreements. I'd like to hear from you. Until then, keep on pumping.